Let's continue our series on hydraulic pumps, taking a look at this variable displacement compensated piston pump. So this is what would be called an axial piston pump in the fact that the pistons are going to go in and out of the cylinder block in line with the axis of rotation. So the axis of rotation would be from our input shaft coming in. So our input's going to be driven by our PTO or by our gearing in some way. And as it rotates, what we can see is that we are making these pistons travel in towards the cylinder block. Well, as it gets to the top, our pockets in each one of those cylinders inside the bore are getting smaller. The outlet side would essentially be out the end of the cylinder block. What we can see 180 degrees from there will be that the pistons are actually being pulled back out and that creates our low pressure. So what we'll see on a piston block is that we would see an inlet side and an outlet side on the pressure plate that seals against this cylinder block right here. We see that the swash plate is this steel plate right here and we can see shoes, these little slippers are going to ride against the swash plate. That's going to make these shoes follow the, the displacement that is set by the swash plate right here. This swash plate pivots on these bores right here and as the swash plate is able to move, what happens is the overall amount of stroke or travel of the piston will either vary and get larger as in maximum displacement as it is right now or get less as we would what's called de-stroke the pump. So I'll use the seal pick for what a seal pick's not designed for and we'll see that as we move this swash plate it becomes flatter. As it becomes flatter the difference between a piston fully extended and fully retracted becomes less and the overall displacement of the pump would go down. Now this will automatically be done. In a fixed displacement pump, we would rely on a relief valve to control the maximum system pressure. In a pressure compensated pump like this one, we actually use this valve right here called our compensator. Now this is a pressure compensator. This port right here is connected to our high pressure outlet port. Now high pressure is determined by the restriction within the system. The pump itself is designed to create flow. But as it sends flow into the system, if it's a closed center directional control valve, the pump has nowhere to send the oil. It becomes dead-ended. When it dead-ends, pressure will rise and that pressure will build up until enough pressure acts on the lands of this spool to push against the large spring that's inside of here. This spring is set or adjusted by this compensator and this compensator has an adjustment underneath this nut right here. So we'd be able to get in and adjust that compensator, often a set of shims behind the spring or an adjustment screw behind the spring to change the overall spring tension on this compensator spool. Now, as that compensator spool is overcome by the spring pressure, so the spring pressure in the compensator spool is overcome by the pressure in the outlet side, it builds up until it can overcome the spring pushes this little spool over until the pump outlet pressure is able to get inside our compensator cylinder, compensator piston right here. When it gets into this compensator piston, it's actually able to push against our piston that acts against the swash plate. So if we just take a look right here, this piston right here, we can actually see will stroke and it's going to be stroked, this compensator piston, against the bias spring. The bias spring is setting the angle or bias of our swash plate to full flow. And as our pressure is built up and overcomes the spring inside the compensator, then what happens is this compensator piston pushes against the bias spring, moving the swash plate to what would be a de-stroked position. So a de-stroked would essentially move this swash plate until the volume that the pump produces is equal to the leakage that is within the system. That leakage might be within the pump itself, the leakage might be within the motor if it's running a hydrostatic motor, the leakage might be in the directional control valves or in another motor. But what will happen is as soon as the pressure is reached, the compensator spool works against the spring, delivers the oil, high pressure oil, to the compensator piston, the piston then de-strokes the pump and the de-stroke position will vary based on the leakage that is inside the system. 
we can see that the swash plate sits on a friction bearing right here. We see the bearing, ball bearings or the taper roller bearings, depending on the pressure building up in the system and the, the overall design of this pump for its build will determine what size and number of bearings support the shaft. And we see that the input shaft drives the cylinder block. And because it drives that, the cylinder block actually pulls the pistons along for the ride. So everything drives together as a group.